Thank you for being here on this morning that we celebrate these individuals who have chosen, first of all, Christ as their Savior, and then realize the need for baptism. And so, I, uh, we, if you have been coming to Light in the Valley for any time, you know that we take baptism very, very seriously. We, we are passionate about it, and we like to make a big deal about baptism because we think it's, a, it's an awesome uh, symbol, an outward symbol of an inward cleansing, and, we, and that doesn't come, and God doesn't take it lightly. I do, however, feel sometimes that it's more important for us for the baptism than it is for God. If there's a seal that, that something that happens as a confirmation in our lives that happens uh, and it's more re relevant to us than what it is to God. But we want to look at what scripture tells us about baptism this morning and uh, super honored to be a part of you guys' journey as you get baptized this morning. We have a, ranging from 10 to, I don't know, 30. 30 years old probably this morning. So uh, we have quite the range. And so uh, we want to talk about that. We're going to get into why we at Light in the Valley and why us as believers all across the world would think that baptism is important. And so that's what we want to do. It's a great day today. God gave us pretty much two commands specifically ordinances that we, and ceremonies that we are to work out as believers. The first one is communion. We do that here uh, at Light in the Valley as well, but then we also do baptism. And baptism, what I've found in Scripture, is something that Jesus commanded us to do. It's a command. And so, why? Why is it a command? And so we want to look at that. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, we'll get started. This is Jesus. He ri it's written in red. It says this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, and everybody say, baptizing. We're going to start over. You're going to get louder, all right? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus' words that if you study that of the context and the grammar and then all of it surrounding, that is a command. It's not supposed to become merely a tradition or a habit or something that we do because other people are doing it. We do it because it's a command of Jesus. And why was he so passionate about it? He didn't say go make disciples and give them a t-shirt and hang a gold cross around their neck. He said baptize them. And so this morning we want to understand corporately. I want my intention this morning is so that we all understand why it's such a big deal for water baptism. And I know that we come from different walks of life and I, I am not here saying that uh, there's one way that is better than another. Uh, we, we simply do baptism here the way that we read scripture and, and that the way that we feel the Holy Spirit tells us to do it through scripture. And so we want to look into that. Water baptism is a statement of faith. It's basically the way that we do it. We do immersion here at Light in the Valley. That's what this tub is for this morning. And it's, it's a symbol of laying down your old life, burying the old life, the sins, and resurrecting again into a new life. That's what water baptism means. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 17, Paul says it to the Corinthian church. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. I don't know how better to explain what's happening when we do immersion water baptism. That's what you're going to witness this morning for these individuals that are getting baptized. Water baptism is a very distinct and descriptive picture of that uh, significance and symbolization in someone's life. It's a symbolization of repentance. Repentance is a word, it's an old-fashioned word we use at church a lot. You hear the word repentance. What does it mean? It simply means you change. It's a 180 degree turn. You, you go from one direction into the other. You confess that Christ is your Savior and you change your life. The old person was a drastic different person than the one today. So that's 
Water baptism is a way of giving testimony, making a public statement of something outside that's happening inside. I think water baptism helps us grasp the reality that the old you has died. It's a confession of what Jesus means to you. What I like about water baptism for me, I was telling these guys, I got baptized when I was 18 years old. Specific date and specific time. And there's not, I've not been perfect Christian beyond that date. Y'all know what I mean? But as I matured in my spiritual life and as, I, as things happen in my life, I go back and I say, no, I was baptized. And Satan can't take me further than that date. We all celebrate different days, uh, different times. I know uh, just lately we celebrated Damon, my oldest. He just had a birthday, turned 21. And we do that every year. We celebrate his birthday every year. Now, uh, we all celebrate our kids' birthday. Uh, my wife and I, uh, Lord willing, September the 7th, we will celebrate our anniversary once again. And we've done it now 25 times. Can you? I know. Give her a hand. Yeah, give her a hand. I told her, you know you're going to have to do it another 25. And she goes, bet me. But that's something that we, there's a date in time that we celebrate that each and every year. And I would, my encouragement to you guys is to never forget February 13th, 2022. That's a date that God is marking in. You are doing it here in in humanity or in physical. You are marking that day as your day. To make a stand and make a public confession for God. And God, I believe this morning the angels are celebrating with him on your behalf of what you're getting ready to do. Hmm. Reminds me, this morning I had the very same feeling, pretty much, of the first time I preached. My knees were weak, my stomach hurt. You're looking at it. That's what's happening here this morning. I remember, celebra- or I go back to the first time I preached. This is very much uh, uh, something that reminds me of that. With all you people, make me nervous. Thank you for being here, but you make me nervous. What a privilege to have a date like this that we can celebrate our Christianity. I will tell you that in all of our lives, every human being who is in this building this morning, we all have had pasts. Lives, things and events and things that have happened to us, things that we've done to other people, things that we were involved in that we're not proud of. Every single person in here. And today is that day where you say, hey, I'm coming up into a new life and Satan will never take you past this date in history. You can always say when you get tempted and when things come your way, You're not taking me further. I was baptized. I was covered. My sins were covered by the blood of Jesus. And I made a public statement about it. If you think about it, when Jesus got baptized, it says that he came up out of the water and it says immediately the Spirit led him into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. Things are going to happen. We live in a broken world. Life's going to come at you. There's, it's going to come at you fast at some times. Always point back to this day. Water baptism is a point of separation that divides the old into the new. Drawing a clear line between the old life and the new life. And it gives us believers a date and time to celebrate great change in our life. In scripture, there's lots of examples about baptism that we can look at, study, and figure out what is the proper way or what's, what, what is the best way. And, and so there's lots of different examples in scripture that, that talk about the act of baptism. You know, it even talks about Jesus getting baptized and you say, well, why would he need to get baptized? He was, a, he was a perfect man on earth. He didn't sin. He lived here for 33 years and never sinned once. Why would he need to get baptized? 
I'll just, it's as simple as this. Jesus was trying to be, and he, he was, an example for us to follow. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. We're going to put it on the screen for you. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. Does it say that in this uh, scripture? It says it in a different translation, but it was John the Baptist. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? In other words, John was standing there, who was baptizing other people. Jesus shows up on the banks of the Jordan, and John was like, no. Why would you ask me to baptize you? Shouldn't it be the other way around? And I would tell you if Jesus was physically here this morning, how many believe he is here this morning? Amen? By spirit. But if he was physically here this morning, we would all have an issue of us baptizing him. Right? We would think it should be the other way around. I know it would be my desire for him to baptize me. That was John the Baptist's desire in Jesus. Verse 15 says... Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. It's an interesting scenario there. Why would Jesus, the perfect God-man, need to be baptized? Even John the Baptist was questioning it as it was happening. Just as it, as it was, the, the whole event unfolded, John the Baptist was actually questioning it. He knew that Jesus hadn't sinned. He knew that he didn't need to confess anything. He was the Son of God, and yet in human form. What would he need to be forgiven of? It wasn't that. Why was he baptized? Verse 15 explains it. You can put it back. It's right there. Verse 15, it says, to do this to fulfill all righteousness. So this morning, what's your reason for being baptized? To fulfill all righteousness. In other words, it completes, it makes whole your commitment to Christ, your Christian life. This is the pinnacle of that. And if you look around, when you get up here and you turn around, you'll freak out. I'm not trying to make you nervous, but there's a lot of people here. There's even people over in the overflow. It's not because of your last name. It's not because of your first name. It's because they're celebrating with you and they're confirming and they're witnessing your fulfillment to righteousness. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. I know there's debate on baptism being a heaven or hell issue. If, you know, if I'm not baptized, do I make it to heaven? I, I go back to the thief on the cross. Jesus didn't take him off the cross that day to baptize him. And he says, today you will be with me in paradise. So I think there is that assurance that you accept Christ as your Savior and you never had the opportunity to get baptized, I get that. But if you're a true believer, I believe your desire should be, I want to experience baptism because it's going to complete my commitment. It's going to fulfill my righteousness. So he set an example for us. Jesus did. As believers, he did it for you and he did it for me. He aligned himself with sinners. Because everybody else down at the Jordan that day was like you and me. We need God's grace to get us through every day. Amen? It's amazing though throughout scripture as you read the life of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, how many times he actually aligned himself with sinners. He did it through meals. He did it through conversations. He taught them daily. He did it as an example for me, and he also aligned himself the day he got baptized. He's our model of obedience to God. Not only was water baptism modeled by Jesus, it was commanded 
by Jesus. It's not an option. It's a command. That's how I look at it. So I get really passionate about baptism. It's an act that God requires of every believer. In fact, some of the last words that Jesus ever recorded in in Scripture was Mark chapter 16, verse 16. And it says this, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. That's pretty strong. It's pretty strong words. It's a command. A lot of significance on baptism. The other thing that I see as I study scripture and I study on how to do it, when to do it, is that the facts are quite frequent inside of scripture that water baptism followed immediately after a person's conversion. They did not delay. They didn't put it off, so to speak. They didn't have to go through a 12-step proving program. They They accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. They would respond to that call and they would immediately baptize them. There's many, many stories of that in Scripture. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Peter replied it and he said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. Later on in verse 41, he says, those who accepted the message were baptized. Somebody say baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. How many people do you think were there if 3,000 of them got baptized? There's only, there's going to be seven of you here. And look at this church, full. Isn't that awesome? 3,000 of them were added that day. They didn't have to jump through some hoop and do some special thing. They were added that day. And so we take that as as the way, an example for us. I've had an individual stop at my store and ask that they wanted to be baptized. And I said, well, when do you want to do it? Next Sunday. And we did it. We set the tank up that week and we had baptism that next Sunday. I don't believe it's important to wait. I think it's more important to get it done. If somebody has a longing on their heart to be baptized. We have a young uh, guy with us this morning, Jason, who is wanting to get baptized. He's 10 years old. And I will tell you, I'm honored to do that for you, son. I pray that God would expand your territory and would keep you in the anointing of what is on your life. You have an amazing amazing testimony to give to your, your fellow schoolmates and your sister and all of your mom and dad. It's going to be an awesome. He's making an early stand for Christ. And so in your honor, when we get ready to baptize, we're going to ask that the three oldest groups of kids over at Kids Church are going to come in here and they're going to watch. I think it's important that we show by action what this means. This past December, I lost, all of us lost, a really dear friend, Harvey Miller. I want to give him some honor this morning. I was walking to my truck after the funeral, and Jamie came up to me, and he said, there's one thing I wish I'd have done before he passed. I have no regrets. There's one thing I wish I'd have done. I said, what's that? He said, I wish I'd have been baptized. I said, when do you want to get baptized? Whenever it suits, I want to get it done. Uh, And so, Jamie, Jolene, Matt, they're getting baptized this morning. And I believe your dad will be in celebration this morning with the angels in heaven for your decision to do that. It's an honor to do this for you. And I know you miss him, but he's he's there. He's pulling for you. God bless you as you walk through this day. They didn't wait. 
That's my point. They didn't wait. Jason, we're going to wait till you turn 18. No, they didn't wait. Jason understands what salvation means. He has accepted Jesus into his heart. He understands it completely. He's 10. We're not going to wait. It's important that we're obedient. Acts chapter 22, I think back of Paul's conversion on his road to Damascus. When the light shone down, God struck him down, blinded him. He went, and the third day, the scales fell off of his eyes. He could see, and he repented, and he was what? Somebody say it. And then what did he do? He went preaching, didn't he? But he repented and was baptized immediately. Immediately. So I think... You could go to Acts chapter 10. You can jot this down. Acts chapter 10, 16, 18, 19. There are, there's many examples where they are converted and they're baptized immediately. I think urgency in that regard is very, very important. And I want to honor that. That's why we're doing it today. Normally we have baptism. We, we all know we have one. It's, it's a, usually a big one in August where we go out to Gabe and Linda's place and we have a beautiful setting there with the pond and everything. But when someone wants to get baptized, we will step up our game and we'll do it. And I will tell you, if there's a believer here this morning who's never been baptized and you want to be baptized, go to the back. They'll get you a t-shirt. We'll get you in there. I promise you it won't take long and I won't hold you down longer than any of the rest. Yeah. Let's do this. Because those people who responded to salvation back then, they realized the, that their faith was not complete until they were baptized. They did it to fulfill their righteousness. And that's what you guys are doing here this morning. So do we all agree this morning? Would you agree with me that baptism is a direct command from God? Would you say amen? It's a direct command for God, from God. The other thing that I've noticed is that water baptism is not a religious thing. It's not a Mennonite thing. It's not an Amish thing. It's not a Protestant thing. It's not a Catholic thing. It's a Christian thing. And it's for all of us. It's a command. I believe it's very significant to have a public, public profession of faith. Jesus' baptism, his, his own baptism was very, very public that day in the Jordan. Everything Jesus did, most of it, he did in public. He called his fishermen for disciples. He called Matthew, the tax collector. All of that was done in public. It was at the city gate that he did this. It was down on the docks that he did this. Every follower of Jesus was called publicly. And that's what we're doing here this morning. We're being public. They're doing this in public. It will give you so much confidence in your Christian life. So much. And I know you guys are super excited about giving your testimony. That's a public declaration. Hey, there's three things that'll keep you from stumbling. It's the blood of the lamb, the testimony, and selflessness. Those all go together. That's scripture. Scripture. I just read it. Don't ask me where I read it, but I just read that. I could probably, hey, where's it at, Elsie? All right, I'll be quiet. You knew I was going to say your name, didn't you? I love you too. Your old life is past. Your new has begun. That's what we're doing here this morning. Something powerful is about to happen. Something really, really powerful is about to happen. A more detailed definition and reason why we do immersion is found in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. It says this. Talking about being buried with baptism. 
and resurrected. It says this, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working God who raised him from the dead. That's about as good as I can describe it from scripture of what's happening here this morning. So today, Brennan, if you'll bring your team up, February 13th, 2022, you're making a bold public statement and commitment that will be witnessed by everyone here that you love the Lord, that you accept his plan of salvation, and that you will live it out to the best of your ability in your life. Are you ready for that? You guys ready for that? Super excited for you. Honored to be a part of this.